to India, friends. So welcome to today. Me and Julie getting together. For those of you who don't know, my name is Vasi Seidman. I'm the founder of Pet Picks, and I'm so excited because Julie, it's a very dear friend of mine. I admire her. I'm her fan. I love her work. And I was so <laughs> honored when she said, yes, Vasi, let's get together. Let's do a live. Let's give some really great tips and tricks to uh, passionate furry parents who love to dress their furry babies and maybe things you probably didn't know because myself I didn't know so I'm really very excited for today to learn some new things I can add and hopefully I can also eventually uh you know going to have Julie very soon coming back to Pet Peaks Academy podcast but without further ado Julie thank you so much for being here with me today well thank you for having me and hi everybody uh today should be like an interesting day um I will say that a lot of you probably already know these things, and some of you don't. Uh, some of you are professional seamstress and designers. Some are you do this as a hobby and just, you know, it's just fun stuff to, to learn. It's little tidbits of stuff. So Vasi and I got together and we got to talking about, you know, pet design as usual, which is my life. And um and I started telling her some things about pet clothing that a lot of people don't know. And she found that very interesting. And she said, hey, why don't you come in and do a, a, a live chat with everybody and give some hints? So that is what I'm going to do. OK, I'm actually going to start with some simple things. OK, and it's only going to be five or six little things I'm going to tell you about when it comes to pet uh, pet making, not necessarily designing. Um, the first thing, you know, um, some people are very funny about how the outfit attaches to their dog, okay? And I don't like to use the word dog because my I don't have dogs. I have children, and little furry children. So, but what they, they, some people don't like Velcro. Some people prefer snap fasteners. But I will tell you a little hint about Velcro. First of all, I, as a designer, do not want, most of my things are harness, harnesses so you can walk your dogs in them. Uh, I always tell people, I suggest for you to use the strongest Velcro on the market. Do not use the glue. It must be sewn on. Okay, guys. Um, this is this is silly, I know, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. This is the hard side. Hear that? Hear this it. Yeah. is the soft side. You hear that? Oh. When you apply the Velcro, always have the hard side that is the, the, the scratchy side facing out when you put it on the harness. The soft side faces in because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but my dogs are long hair. And if that gets on them, it pulls their hair. Okay. So that's what I would suggest. Always tell people when I make my designing clothing, the hard side faces out, the soft side faces in towards the body. Okay. And that way you won't have that pull half and it'll get caught in the hair or whatever. But you also don't want that hard side against their body touching them. Now, there is this thing called snap fasteners. Okay, you can use those as well. But if you use snap fasteners, I tell people do not use it as a harness because then it will it can easily pop off. And gosh, we don't want that to happen when you walk in your no. dog. Absolutely do not. Okay, so that's one of the tidbits. Now, the next thing I'll tell you about is something. Oh, before I go there, what to sew it on with? I suggest a 14 or a 16 needle, okay? It's a thicker needle. That hard stuff is hard to go through sometimes. If you're going to be using a nine or 10 needle, you're going to break them. You're going to break them left and right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to skip your stitches and stuff. So I always suggest a 14 or 16 needle. Now, we're going to go on to the next little tidbit of information. And sorry, guys, it's just kind of silly me, I know. Um, D-rings, D-rings. Okay, years ago, I, I started putting the pretty fancy D-rings with the, with the rhinestones on the clothing. I mean, it's very pretty. I still do it. I still do it. But for goodness sakes, don't rely that to be a D-ring. That is actually a buckle, okay? It is not strong. Do not depend on that to be something you want to hook your dog to and walk it with it because we don't want our little fur babies getting loose. So what I use is two deep rings. I always use one under and then I could put the fancy one on top. 
Now, you don't always have to buy those fancy ones. You can actually buy a good D ring, but make sure that it's flat if you want. And then you can put your crystals on it to make it fancy. And I would use E6000, which dries very hard. It's permanent, it's not coming off. So use a flat D ring. Or you're not going to use them. You want to buy the little rhinestone ones pre done. You have the D ring, but I don't know if anybody can see this very closely. Yeah, we see it. Okay? That's welded. Do not buy one that's not welded because believe it or not, the fabric can still slip loose from that unwelded part. So mm -hmm. always use a welded D ring. Okay. And I've got a few more things here. Hang on, I'm going to look at my phone. Um, best kind of glue to use. Okay, when you're applying crystals. I think e6000. Yeah. E Julie, you froze for a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, the best kind of glue to use on your crystals. Okay. Um, you can use E6000, but it's stinky and it is a little toxic. So you have to do it in a, a room that's, that has a, a window open or something. Okay. It dries clear. It dries hard. Of course, you've got to get the bottle that says dry, clear, and dry, dry hard. It comes in white. It comes in black. But it, I use clear. But if you do not want to use that and it works just as well, okay, and this is information I got on a, from another designer, Miss Beautiful Gina told me this, who does those amazing crowns, um, Gym Tac. Gym Tac is a great glue, okay? It dries clear. It's soft. There's no smell to it. So that's what I would suggest that you use to apply crystals with. Um, uh, the interfacing. I always tell people to interface your outfits because it creates a body and it keeps the outfit firm. It keeps its shape. When you pick up something you get and it's flimsy, they didn't use interfacing. And I also tell people when you put the interfacing, you can use ironing, you can use sewing, whatever you want. But it, it makes a big difference to the body of the fabric when, when you are making the outfit. And always, always top stitch. When you make that harness top stitch, okay? It looks like a cleaner finished piece. Um, lining, another tidbit of information. Oh. Um, do not use fleece. Do not use flannel. And you say, why? It'll keep my dog warm, whatever. Guess what? It'll also mat your dogs. Um, I never use flannel. I never use fleece. Um, I will use, however, suede cloth. And I use that a lot. It's, it's nice and firm. It's very finished inside. Um, that's, that's actually a good lining. Or you could use a sheath lining or a broadcloth cotton, something like that that's cool and light for the summertime. Uh, but honestly, if you use fleece or you use flannel, your dog, if it's long hair, it's gonna it's gonna mat. If you have a short haired dog, I don't think that that will be a problem. But I wouldn't on a long haired dog. Um, okay, this is this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> sorry, I gotta tell you anyways. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Just say she didn't know what she's talking about. But let's say I've been sewing for uh, forty years, so I am old school. I will tell you that I am old school. I believe in rolling a hem twice, all right? And if, and I believe in if you're going to make a pretty dress, extra special, take the extra time, put a hem lace on underneath. It just looks clean. It looks finished. You know, it's just a beautiful thing. My pet peeve, when I see a serged skirt, now they're very pretty and you, and you have a nice tight serge and you go around the edges of it and it's very pretty, but guess what? It doesn't take much for that to get snagged. And when it does snag, it runs, okay? If you want your hem to be pretty, this is something, I love pretty hems. I love the bottoms of the skirts, the way they flow. Put some lace on it. Put, put some ribbon on it, something like that. Then you'll have that pretty but finished hem, okay? Um, I, I've got some, you know, funny quirks about me, but, you know, that's how I work. That's how I roll. So, I hope all this information helped you guys. Um, uh, I, and I hope that you go out and, and it, try to sew. Try to make a little dog outfit. Go get a pattern. So start with a pattern, okay? And again, I'm old school. Iron your pattern before you lay it down. So it lays flat. You get a precision cut. You get a precision size. But it's important to measure your dog, obviously. You measure around the dog's neck. 
and around the upper body behind the front legs. Now, if you're doing a belly band or a little pair of pants, it's lower, okay? And I always do this when I have a furry, thick fur dog coat, I tell people two fingers underneath that measuring tape will allow for some movement for that hair, okay? So I hope this stuff helped you guys. And, and thank you for joining me. Gosh, this was fun. Thank you, Fasi. Uh, thank you as well. I honestly, Julie, learned so much. I mean, it's very exciting because as a photographer and teaching people to take pictures with their phone, I always see only what people can see with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of these things which are extremely important behind the scenes, I really don't know about them. And today I learned very important information. So thank you so much. And I'm sure You're that welcome. we have it's really fantastic by the way friends i mean we have quite a bit of people watching live i mean currently we are sharing to multiple facebook page this video will be also uh, available on pet Pix academy uh, youtube channel also instagram so each of you friends you can share it and watch it but a couple of things thank you for the love thank you everyone hi debbie hi there a couple of things i wanted just to kind of share with you as well julie i remember and now makes sense you know uh Years ago, before I came to pet fashion world and didn't know any better, I would go to Amazon, buy these very inexpensive things, and I would wonder why, you know, the Velcro, it's damaging the pet's fur, the pet's outfit, including my own outfits. I mean, like with my shirts, I have to be very cautious when I do picture days like because I'm going to damage with the Velcro my shirt. So I do agree with you. And another thing I also wanted to share with you, which is really funny about the measurement. So I, my husband and I, like two weeks ago, had to take the measurement of my doggy for the first time. And that was a really fun one. I even joked that if we had the camera and it's like probably we'll get over two million views because it's funny to see two adults <laughs> taking the measurement I, for the first time of our little chihuahua so seven and a half pounds a little furry baby who was trying to bite us <laughs> and we're like it's hilarious so i do agree with you but you know we didn't know any better now mm -hmm. of course i have you you really teach me and you know people may not realize and i know that your fans and people who follow you and and etc they know that you create one of a kind you know i don't know people may don't know all of the accomplishment i mean you are very well known like internationally on a global level you have fans i mean when i post on our instagram and it was we love julie we love julie i mean i know that you want tons of awards you know people from all around the world dress the babies with your outfits you're just very humble person you never talk about this but can you share maybe like two interesting facts about some of your accomplishments like awards or um you know fashion shows you have done in the past and i know i put you here on the <sighs> hot spot well but mostly um it's east coast because i live in richmond virginia and so i travel to new york uh before covid quite often and i was very honored to be asked to be the fashion designer for um little shelter which is literally uh a rescue that's over 80 years old, you know? And wow. so, and it was sponsored through Mozzarella and Ferrari, which was, a, it was, you know, really a cool yes. thing to, to be able to do. It was a beautiful stage, a beautiful setup. I've been fortunate to be asked many times to participate in the New York Pet Fashion Show and have won uh, top designer for that in 2016. And, I, and if you've seen the podcast before that, um, uh, it, I don't take credit for that myself. You know, my good friend, Lynn Lena, uh, in her beloved little Baxter and I participated in that. And, and I don't think I could have done it without her because she was the show. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. such a show. Yeah. And uh, I participated down in Florida with G Girl Production uh, multiple times. Uh, I've won some awards down there. Um, I think we did. I won, um, believe it or not, a photography award for, uh, yes, I did for... Um, a picture of Jet and Bella together, uh, that won um, a, a, a huge trophy, which is still in there. And uh, uh, let's see, gosh, um, the, so, many, uh, yeah. so, so many, I, I can't name them all, but uh, and obviously there's a lot of small awards that 
uh, for people that purchase from me and I make their outfits and I get an email later going, oh my gosh, I won first place, you know? Well, I don't really consider myself winning that. I, I consider the person that uh, participated in it, I just helped her. <laughs> you know? And, uh, yeah. but yeah, my, my goal, actually, I would like to get out to LA. I really, you know that already. And yeah. um, I, I want to get out there because I help so many rescues out there and I want to meet these girls, you know? Mm. I mean, I've been corresponding with them for a number of years and um and that is why i do my auction obviously because i am going to help a rescue i am not going to um do anything unless you involve rescue don't ask me because the answer will be no um in my world and it, it may not be in everybody's world but in my world i would not have this job without the dogs and it is part of my job as who I am as a human being to help out in any way that I can and so that's how I do it and that's why I do my auction every month because I know uh not uh, not everything goes to to the rescue obviously I'm, I I make things and I sell them for my auction for myself as well but I like this month I have nearly 60 bandanas wow and you know what auction started yesterday and nearly all of them are sold now all that money goes to rescue all of it. And each month it is a different rescue. I don't do the same one. I may do the same one later on, but I always try to pick a different rescue. Um, so um, that's kind of, that. that's me. That's who I am. You know, um, it's just a calling. It's just a calling. And I, and I feel like I've been blessed more. I told my husband today, I feel blessed because I'm doing something that I have always wanted to do. I can stay home. If you can hear the background, the snoring, I don't know if you hear that. <laughs> We don't hear the babies. No, that's that that's that's Sir Nigel loves a lot. He's a snorer. He's almost fifteen years old. Oh. I have a I have a stroller next to me all the time. I got three little fur babies in there, and they're sacked out. But um, you know, I get to be home with my dogs. Yeah. How lucky is that? But occasionally I have to travel. You know, yeah. and with COVID, it's been you know on the downswing. But uh, I, I see it coming back up, uh, and I hope it does. Um, you know, love your dogs, take care of them, bless you for for rescuing them. Um, and, and, you know, I do what I can do, like every, I and mean, then there's a lot of people who do what I do too. So um, we're lucky people. We are lucky people. And I truly believe, like you and I, we talked about it, that each of us, we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes difference can be like, you know, you, I mean, this group, like one thing, friends, I noticed for Julie, I mean, first of all, Julie was so generous. She came to Pet Picks Academy podcast, episode number 76. So also on September 28th, we are celebrating our 100th episode, big celebration. Woohoo! So you're coming back and I'm so excited. So friends, stay tuned. We're going to share information. You can definitely hear Julie's new interview. Uh, but I was very impressed the fact that you're so given, so dedicated, everything you do. And you're not only trying to support rescue organization, you're also trying to support small business like every time every month you bring a very interesting small That's business cool. with accessories so you're a very given person uh and and this is very rare nowadays i definitely want to thank you because this is like you didn't sleep people may not know what's behind the scene i mean you're solving you're creating you're answering questions to people you're networking <laughs> to make sure that you know this rescue organization is legitimate Mm -hmm. because we know that exactly. some of them are not, not exactly. uh, and trying to make sure that you bring a good guest to the mm -hmm. to your group you know who also will try to help and it's just some it's a lot of things and you are one person and you're doing all of these things and it's amazing well it's not been an easy two years i will say two years prior to that i had a couple of girls working with me that did what they call peace work you know, where I would give them pieces to sew together and they would bring back and then I would, you know, I'd have the design ready to go, give it to them, they bring it back and I put it together, which made my life a lot easier. And since COVID, obviously that is no longer going on, but it, it will again, I'll pick up again. I hope to pick up um, more production. I, th I think my production is pretty crazy wild now, but I'm hoping to, but I, you know, I am, I've got such a niche about being one of a kind. You know, and a lot of people don't care. You know, I certainly I have been asked to be in boutiques, a number of boutiques. And when they find out that I only do one of a kind, they don't really they'll, they'll buy a few pieces. But then they're like, oh, can I get the same thing in a size medium? No, you can't. 
can't get the same thing because that is who I am. I am not going to do multiples of the same thing. And look, like I said this a long time ago, I am not interested in being rich. I'm interested in being happy. And if I have to repeat the same thing over and over and over again, I'm not going to be happy. Okay. I want to create. I want, I like texture. I like color and, you know, and I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to repeat the same thing over, 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 over. Uh, I will make something similar, okay? But I will change it in some way. And sometimes the second one's better than the first one. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know. But no, I'm not making multiples, you know, 20 pieces or 10 pieces of the same thing. You know, they got other companies to do that for them. Um, I just, you know, I want to like what I'm doing. I want to love what I'm doing. And I tell people all the time, this is a, this is a labor of love. They have no idea. They have no idea that I stay up till four or five o'clock in the morning. They have no idea that, you know, I stress when I don't get something in the mail and somebody wants their outfit, you know, soon, uh, you know, they, they don't, they don't understand the, all the, the, like you said, behind the scenes thing. Okay. Yes. Um, gosh, an auction a lot of people think the auction's over. Well, when you have 150 pieces on an auction, guess what? I got to send invoices out to every one of those people. I have to put their photos in a word processing thing so I know who got what, when, where, and how. You know, I got to collect funds. I have to ship out and, and I put Velcro on everything. I got everybody's sizes because in my auctions, I don't have Velcro on them. I do not. Because what I have is like, I will have an outfit on there. And it'll range from size, say the neck is a seven to a, a nine. Well, send me the exact size. Guess what? That's pretty custom made because it's mm -hmm. custom fit. So that's why I put my Velcro on after. So there's a wider range of sizes there. But I had to put Velcro on all those pieces afterwards. So it is, wow. it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But, and then in between that, I'm taking custom orders. I do a lot of custom orders. But, um, you know, again, <laughs> if you didn't love what I'm doing, you wouldn't do it because <laughs> it is I, hard work. But mm -hmm. I love it. I love yeah. it. And I'm telling you, I am so blessed. I have met so many wonderful people um, and so many wonderful dogs. And I often said the hardest part about my job, I've been in this for so many years that I've seen little fur babies come and go. And that's the hardest part. You know, when you have been designing for like, example little baxter i loved him with all my art i love lynn i go to her house and stay with her all the time and guess what guess who got in bed with me little baxter gave me kisses and loves to let to see him go was very hard for me but um then again i say this i know he, his little heart went to heaven but when one door closes another one opens and now she has avery so and he's doing really well he, he's going to be a huge just little 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 designer yeah. boy you know, and you got to be proud of these little dogs. They go walk down that runway and they just strut their stuff. I mean, golly, you know, and nobody can tell me in this world that that dressing dogs is cool. I just want to punch them in the nose. It's like, are you kidding me? Do you know these people at all how much they love their dogs? So, and again, I'm not saying dogs. Apologize for that. Baby. I say little children's. They're yeah. little children's because mine are my little children's, you yeah. know. So, but um, I want to thank you for doing this. It's, it's, it's fun. I hope people got some information. Um, you know what? I'll gladly, if you want to message me, give you some, any more information, ask me a question. If I can answer it, I will. I really will. You're an open book and you always try to help everyone. One of the many things I love about you. Well, you know what? This is a big world and sharing is a good thing. You know, yes. um, I have no problems with sharing. Yeah, absolutely i know that and i want to really thank you and just before we are done for today because you like to share i also like to share i would give our friends also five tips very quick on how you can take better pictures because you're right you you create you put all of your heart and soul in what you do and and people who are passionate and very proud and sometimes the pictures don't come up the way they want them to come up and then later it's like ah, why my pictures are so dark? There is so much light here. I'm like, well, it's, uh, it's, we'll tweak it together. So the most important, and it's silly to say, but to wipe the camera of your phone. And so when you wipe the camera of your phone, typically friends wipe it from both sides. You know, that's important. What we you can wipe it, it is going to be actually with the you know, the microfiber, you wipe your regular glasses and sunglasses. Just make sure you don't like, 
you don't leave any lint because that's possible. And when you touch it, especially when it's hot, there is fingerprints, you know, uh, just everything can stay and you can have that picture or video. So this is tip number one. Tip number two is going to be to try to find the location. Where would you like to take the picture? So we know that less is more. A lot of times, people, even when I look at your beautiful pictures and video you post on both social medias, your primary use, uh, simplicity. It's a wide, like one background. You don't want too busy things. I mean, now that now that fall is coming, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and etc. But still, even if you use props and accessories, you don't want to be bigger size and so overpowering that you don't see the baby with a beautiful outfit. So just be aware. And the way I build my background, clean, nice background, and I always try to add actually foreground and the babies to be in the middle. So you have foreground, let's say pumpkins, leaves, flowers now for the fall, you have the babies and then you have the background. So the idea of a nice photograph, like a nice outfit, it's to look uh, 3D, to look like a movie, to don't like it looks really nice. So just kind of size ways, don't be overpowering uh, and have an idea. Idea, it's important of what you do. Mm -hmm. And so, because you and I, you know, we talked a lot about it in our podcast episode, the one coming on 28 for the 100th episode launch. Uh, you know, you said I get inspired by everything. Uh, you know, when you create your beautiful outfits, the same way as us, whoever it's, as an artist take pictures, we get inspired. But myself, sometimes I get inspired, I go to Pinterest and I look at uh, children's photography, newborns or like little kids. And that's how I get inspired. And I try to like, you know, tip number three or four, I try to reuse what I have first. Mm -hmm. And then if I need to purchase something, I'm on a budget. I don't want to spend more than, you know, uh, I don't like to spend a lot of money on props because then I have to also think about storing them because especially for the holidays, they're exactly. trendy. <laughs> you don't want, you know, to, I have too much, but now I start, I actually, I use the same thing so far, like two to three years in a row. I just dress them up, change the angle, maybe paint them a little bit with the spray and done deal. Uh, and also lighting, it's important. And for the lighting, we know that you and I very well. Uh, lighting, always try to use the, the largest window in the room, but you don't want to have a direct sunlight. So you want to have a little diffuse light, but that also means that make sure that your body does not produce a shadow because very often I'm sure that you've noticed this as well like you're holding the phone and you can see in the bottom of the furry baby it's darker mm -hmm. especially with your beautiful outfits we you know like mm -hmm. half of the <laughs> yeah exactly and you know it's lighting and like I was looking in our group and I'm like I love the babies I love the pictures but they're too dark you don't see the eyes you don't see the sparkle in the eyes so all of those things friends be careful sometimes it's simple you can use a reading light and just point it at the babies you know I had a student of mine she knows who she is when she hear this she used her Tiffany light in the beginning so we don't need to have anything fancy but just use little lights and if you go outside Typically an hour to an hour and a half before sunset will be the best time of the day for you to take picture. In the middle of the day, again, depends on where we live because you and I, we have people from all around the world and followers and I have people from Australia, you name it, from everywhere. And But during the day, you typically have a heavy shadow under and sometimes mm -hmm. it's overcast, so it's changes. But I really hope that those things are really helpful for people. And I have permission from you this year, this month, I wanted to participate in the contest mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to raise money for the rescue. So what I decided, friends, it's that I will post a link to my holiday quest, which it's on like only like now it's like $17 and 100% mm -hmm. of the $70 will go to the rescue. So that's what you will do. So when you go to the link, you see the price, whoever buys, Till the end of the auction, everything goes to the rescue. So that's how I can help. And I hope that the tips, do you think that some people will benefit from the photography tips? Absolutely, they will. Are you kidding? Of course they will. Um, but the, remember, the auction runs until next Sunday. It, it ends at midnight. That's the last time I'll. So we still have the whole week to go. Okay. And we've just started. Um, and just letting everybody know, I 
list things every single day, something new every single day. And there's a little bit of a hint here. I go high, then I go do the two twos on Tuesday, and then I'll do fun things on Wednesday. And you know, it's I'm, I'm like an engine. I start getting revved up. And then when we get towards the end of the week, I really start getting revved up. And sometimes you might see your best things at the end of the week. So don't miss it. It's every month and I an off the cuff stuff for pets auction, you know, and just know that I will benefit a rescue every time. And I would love to bring in my accessory designers, uh, introduce somebody new because, you know, there's a lot of talent out there and it's, 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 it's nice to share. <laughs> for sharing and such a sharing and giving person and dear friends hi root so nice to see you there uh also a lot of people may not know but if you can actually pin the facebook group so this way you can see it as one of your favorite groups this is one thing because after a while friends if you have not come for a long time which you know you're missing a good mm -hmm. outfits and giving back to the furry kids you stop seeing facebook groups and pages and accounts so yeah. that yes and you don't want that so that's why uh the truth is friends when you go you know when you go on the check bar and you find a group let's see and typically when you go on the top and you're going to open the menu and that's where you can pin you know you can pin the group and this way you're going to have especially if you open it from a computer you're going to see all of your favorite groups so you're going to have a quick access and i suggest people add it to your calendar once you know the next yeah. uh, option it's coming because some people sometimes i hear from people we are too busy which we know all, all of us we are busy but add it to your calendar so you don't miss yeah because every month every month there's one um i will probably something i thought about was posting a three month ahead date so people can see what the next three months will will be and you know uh, there's a lot of auctions <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, mine's not the only one, but um, mine will be the one that will give as well, though. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be one that'll be giving. A lot of them do. But um, it's just, it's a fun auction. My gosh, it's fun. It's the best time to get a great deal on one of my pieces because yes. I start them at half price and a lot of them sell at half price. So, you know, you just got to be there. Yeah, and that's huge. I mean, this is really huge. Mm -hmm. And also, honestly, friends, the holidays are coming. Mm -hmm. So as we know, if you have some people you really cherish and love and you want to give them a gift for their furry kids, you know, don't forget this is good, you know, for for people. Uh, and especially, I mean, my sister already, it's in, I already purchased my holiday backgrounds and stuff. A lot of people, because you need to still ship them and et cetera, and now, really great mm -hmm. deals i mean we know holidays it's chaos maybe the mail will be slower you never know things happen and i i actually i offer gift certificates as well and they can use them towards the auctions that's fantastic so, so yeah, don't that's, that's, that's awesome. a, i know that everybody i mean i you know i feel like gift certificates you know not everybody has fur babies but everybody a lot of people know somebody who do have fur babies and so they could get a gift certificate and tell them go to the auction you can use it there that's fine you that's know fine. i don't care so oh this is mm -hmm. i didn't notice that you have gift certificates mm -hmm. yeah you have the interview and i didn't know this about <laughs> what you do <laughs> well i will be making sure that i tell everyone because i think that again you have you're so talented you have such a great reputation from everywhere like, again, I posted our, you know, our class today and get together. And, and I got so many private messages. Oh, so Facebook. sweet. Yeah, and people were like, thank love you. Julie. I love Julie. And your podcast episode, because again, now I posted 94, tomorrow it's 95. Yeah, ours was six, 76 and the new one is October, it's September 28th for the launch. You all got so many view, like downloads. Oh, how nice. It's amazing. So it's, you know, iTunes and Spotify, Amazon, Music, Pandora. And I got like that, was the, you know, downloads. <laughs> Did you get any response? Said, and who's that crazy lady with the purple in her hair? <laughs> And I'm like, yes. And everyone, it's like, and I thought before I launched the first episode to a few people, they're like, Masi, we can't wait to hear Julie's podcast. I'm like, yes. And then now 
I, you, I mean, we have released our on 28th and I'm so excited because there's some really great information. So friends, uh, stay tuned. It's not every day when Julie, because you're so busy oh. solving and creating, like you don't have time. So I was like, so excited when you say, yes, fast, we'll do it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, better schedule it, put it in the schedule. Well, there. you know, um, I'm humbled. You're very I'm always, humbled. I'm always humbled. Please know that. You know, I told you recently, I said, sometimes I feel embarrassed about putting, be look at this, you know, beautiful, elegant, custom made. I feel like I'm patting myself on the back and I'm like, I hope that doesn't sound egotistical. Oh. But then I'm like, well, what the heck? It is pretty. It's beautiful. And I'll tell you this, if I put something on Facebook or I post it anywhere and I say, even I'm impressed with it, that means it's extra beautiful because I am my worst critic. Believe me, I am my worst critic. I can look at something, oh, that's nice. And it always blows me away when I get all these gorgeous, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, wow, they really did like that. <laughs> I think part of it is, you know, you do this for so many years and yeah. after a while you go, I hope everything doesn't start looking the same. And that's what I strive not to have. OK, and that's why I try to have different lines of design, you know, from my patchwork shabbies, my boutiques, my portrait dresses, my fur babies, my what's my last one, the eclectic dreams. Uh, and and just I'm trying to get these different lines and everything. The design is different. You know, it's just because I, I again, I think that comes back from doing multiples of one thing. You know, I don't want to do that, you know, no. so but um, fun Thank world. You. Yes, and you're making it beautiful and you're making a difference. And I really hope, friends, that, you know, this video, this it doesn't matter which platform you're watching it, please share, spread with the world. Because mm -hmm. as you can see, Julie, it's not only a beautiful person. She's not only a talented designer, but she's very given and really you know, she helps a rescue every month. And this is incredible, especially nowadays with everything happening. We need more Julie's in our life. So let's appreciate what well, we Well, I will say, say one more thing before, you know, we probably have to close this out. But um, if you sell something and you, you know, you post, I, like I, this is a story I told you before, prior that when I first started giving every month the auctions, I've been doing auctions for years, but when I first started giving, I would put the highest price dress I gave all the money, you know, and it would always make over a hundred dollars. I was always like, if you're that, but I always felt so guilty. It's like, gosh, could I do more? Could I do more? But let me tell you guys something about a hundred dollars. Okay. A hundred dollars buys a tray of vaccines for dogs. Now, if that doesn't make you feel good, nothing should a hundred dollars. So if you have an auction and all, and you give something to the rescue, don't feel bad if it's a hundred, only a hundred dollars, because I became very aware of that when my rescue people were coming back and I said, I'm so sorry, I couldn't do more. And they come back and go, are you kidding me? That's the one thing you'll find out about rescue people. You will find the best people in the world because those are the people that really have a heart and really have a passion for, for the needy little doggies and the little kitties and little animals in the world. They are ever so grateful for anything, anything. So give to your rescue, please. Thank you. Thank you. And friends, if anyone always, please reach out to me. Uh, I would always donate any anything whatever i can and just before we are done i i will share with you as a local photographer in florida even if i help on a yearly every year I help over 40 rescue organizations the last time i donated over 600 gift certificates which is oh, a lot great thing that's thank great you. thank you thank you but i always knew that i can help people to take pictures so the rescue babies can find forever home and this is one of the reasons, not only for the furry parents, which I'm very passionate because even today I had a lady and she said, why I didn't come before to you, Vasim? Like, well, it's never, it's, it's still we met, we, we did it. But the point is that that's the magic of us being able with our gifts and you can sew, I can take pictures and I can teach and someone maybe make treats. Some people make, you know, accessories. Each, some of us may not have the, financial opportunities to do it but just with pressing share you know mm -hmm. each of us can make a small difference and that's what honestly brings me the chills that we are really can do it 
And really, mm -hmm. and I want to say hi to Jennifer uh, from Celebrity Catwalk. So nice to see you, Jennifer. We love you. You know, hi to Emmy. Hey, Jennifer. You know? nice to see you there and Cynthia stop by and so many other people so thank you friends because each of you you help us thank you for the love to make this happen we cannot thank you enough thank, thank you Julie for thank your you. friendship and uh you know our show and journey will be continue continue involving mm -hmm. I'm excited to continue seeing this week your beautiful stuff again pet pics will give a class and everything will go 100% to the rescue. And uh, we will launch our podcast episode on September 28th for our 100th episode podcast celebration. And Jennifer, it's coming to you. Because Yay! Jennifer, <laughs> I know. Well, without Jennifer, I always loved pet fashion, but pet pics wouldn't go into direction of pet fashion. Yes. And now it's, it's our new thing. The kind of it's a new thing for me only six months into this world but i'm loving it from the mm -hmm. bottom of my heart and thank you for bringing so much you're, joy you're welcome and thank always. you gosh you always give me compliments please i mean woman you're, nice. <laughs> you're wonderful <laughs> you're wonderful not going to wash i can tell you that inside in our pet fix membership i have a lot of your clients and you know they share pictures so i can give them some feedback mm -hmm. Every single time I can recognize your outfits. That's oh, like, such I, a cool thing. Yes. You know, it's nice to be, it's nice to know that you, people can look at your work and know it's yours. That is a really huge compliment. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. High five. I, yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you. High five. So thank you. I am leaving you so you can continue creating. Yeah, it's auction week. <laughs> yeah, auction week super busy. Friends, share this video with everyone you know who loves uh, furry kids who loves to donate, who loves to make a difference because together we are stronger. Thank you, sweetie. You know, bye everyone. Kisses, hugs, and see you soon. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, friends. Bye, bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye.